Hey, I want to do a quick video on a game that I've been working on. Um, I'm just going to show you what I have here real quick, and then I'm going to go through and explain more about it. Um, but you can see from this that it is an isometric style um, map, and currently kind of using a classic, you know, pixel art look, uh, retro pixel art look. So maybe if you're familiar with like Final Fantasy Tactics or Tactics Ogre, um, it's going to look kind of in that zone. All of this is really just placeholder art, though, and um, I'm gonna just kind of show you some of the features. So you'll notice the selection here is, as I move the mouse, is following the mouse. Um, and it'll do things like move between the layers. So um, I'm on a lower layer here, but if I you know, come over here, it's gonna automatically jump up to the, to the topmost layer. And I can switch over to an editing mode here. And so I've got this cursor and anywhere I wanna paint, I can just paint uh, this tile that's active. And then you can see down here at the bottom, I've got you know a whole bunch of tiles to pick from. So uh, I'm just going to pick the grass for now and plug up some of these uh, water sources where it doesn't really make sense, where there's just a block of water um, sitting there that isn't flowing. Um, and I can do things too, like there's a blank tile here, and this is basically for like erasing, so I can get rid of stuff if I want to. Um, and then, yeah, the map itself, um, I have a couple modes for the map, so I can either like save and load maps, or I can um, auto-generate one, so it's kind of procedural generation. And uh, this map here is initially procedurally generated, and it's pretty basic. It's like if I'm on this top layer, it's a certain percentage chance of water or a certain percentage chance of grass, and then within grass, there's a certain percentage chance of getting like the light grass, the overgrown grass, or the grass with flowers. And each layer is kind of set up that way with, you know, slightly different rules. Um, so it's, it's pretty, pretty basic stuff, but it gives you a decent procedurally generated map to start with. Um, and then I can move between layers here. So if I use up and down on the keyboard, I can look at these different layers and like, um, even these little bushes here are, uh, really just tiles. So I can go through and like get rid of ones that don't make sense. So like that one's over the water, just kind of weird looking, um, and then, yeah, so, I mean, I guess I'll just give you a quick demo of making a, um, a map here. So, um, let's just make like a waterfall essentially. Um, so here I'll have the water come in this way and, um, we'll make this a little nicer as we go, but yeah, it's basically going to flow down here through the middle. And to do that, I'm going to, um, I need to kind of see where it's going, but I'm just gonna remove like a layer of uh, the ground and have this just gradually get deeper as it goes. So now we're down like two layers and then in the center, let's go ahead and carve out one more layer. And then um, just because of the way these tiles are created, um, the water sits a little lower than the other tiles. So if I just go through here and I um, put wat stack water tiles and then here fill this in, it's gonna look like it's a waterfall. You can kind of see how it's got these little ripples on it. Um, so it just looks, looks like kind of a gentle waterfall. And then um, we could make this look a little more interesting um, by coming in here and making it pool a little bit. So I'm gonna make it pool up on a couple for a couple tiles before we get down one more level. So you can see that's already like quite a bit more interesting. And then, um, you know, we can put stuff in here like, you know, maybe close to the water, there's more plants growing. So we can put some bushes in here and maybe put some little bushes on the edge. Um, and then, um, yeah, you know, we could just grab any of these decorations. So we could just put some rocks here. You know, I don't want to make it completely symmetrical. Um, that's weird. I think I put my rocks on the wrong layer there. Uh, yeah, let's see. I'm going to try erasing that. I don't know. I don't know what happened. But uh, anyway, we've got some rocks there. Um, 
and yeah, you can see like pretty quickly you can get some nice scenes going. Um, I'm going to come down and just put some more, a few more rocks in here so it looks more natural. And yeah, I think that's pretty decent. Um, and then, you know, we could do things like I have some of these wooden tiles here. So if we wanted to, we could just um, have a little house here that looks out over all this. So I'm gonna kind of fill in all these water tiles. Um, and then I'm just gonna make a little porch basically. So we'll come up a layer and uh, maybe we'll make the porch come out to about here. Little kind of deck, I guess. And if we wanted to, we could put some little accents on here. Um, but you could imagine if, um, uh, you know, so these are just the tiles. Obviously I'll want to have other, um, assets that I can put in here, um, that are bigger than the tiles. So, you know, if you could imagine, um, just like a isometric, um, shop or house with like a, a front you could basically, you know, just put that, um, place that here kind of next to the the porch so that maybe you have a little door like right um, right in front of my cursor here and then um, you know you could have a little shop or store that's back here where like this is the side and then this is kind of the front up here um, and you could do the classic thing where either like when somebody goes in you either like hide the roof or, uh, or hide the roof on the wall or um, you know hide the face the roof and the wall, uh, right wall so that you can see the character going in there um, and then there's other places where I'd want to have tall sprites too. So like, uh, you know, if we wanted to have like trees or, um, any other kind of like buildings or structures that were significantly taller than a tile. Um, yeah, so I haven't gotten to that yet. I've just kind of focused on the tile editing part at the moment. Um, just trying to make that like really easy to work with. And so, yeah, I'm feeling pretty good about that. Um, I'm going to get rid of that for a second and then, yeah, I'm going to get rid of some of this noise here too just kind of make it focus a little more on the water. Um, but yeah, I mean, so far um, I'm doing this all just in C++ and um, a little hardware abstraction layer called SDL2. Um, I think, um, yeah, I think Steam, some stuff for Steam, like maybe the Steam client runs on that. Um, I think it's a pretty common hardware abstraction layer to use. Um, and this is the first thing I've done in C++. So I mean, I'm, I am a professional programmer, but um, I haven't worked with C++ before, um, and it hasn't really been too bad. Um, I think for, especially for like a 2D type game, um, it's, you know, it's, uh, everything here is really just kind of straightforward programming. Um, and I say that in contrast to like using something like Unity, where you're, there's like a huge framework that you're kind of learning how to like fit your game into. Um, so it's been kind of refreshing for, to be able to focus mostly on just like programming and logic versus like learning, um, unity or learning, you know, somebody else's framework, um, and having it not be like kind of tailored to exactly what I'm doing. Um, so yeah, it's been really cool. Uh, I'm going to switch this out of edit mode again for a second. Um, yeah, so there's a lot of directions I could go with this. Um, some obvious ones are like supporting animated tiles. And I haven't done that yet, partly because I'm not sure um, exactly what kind of game I'm making. And um, it'd be pretty straightforward because right now um, all these tiles get rendered every turn. So it's just a matter of like every so many um, ticks or every so many, you know, like milliseconds just loading the next. Uh, rendering the next tile out of a set uh, for a given tile. So like a, a water tile might have, you know, like four steps in its animation or something like that. I mean, it could be as many as I want. Um, so I'm not too worried about that. Like, I think it'll be easy to add. Uh, another one would, if, if I do a type of game where there's like characters moving around, like if you think of like a tactics game or like an adventure game, um, I, I would still need to add a characters and character movement and animation and all that kind of stuff. Um, I just haven't gotten to it yet because I'm trying to make this part really good first. And 
Uh, yeah, as far as like the type of game I'm going to do with this, I'm not entirely sure. Um, there's a bunch of games that have um, traditionally used this um, way of rendering that I really like. Like I, I do enjoy all those uh, strategy-based games. Um, I think those are pretty uh, thoroughly covered, I guess is how I think of it. Like I'm not sure what I would do that'd be better than like a Final Fantasy Tactics or Tactics Ogre type thing. And they, they get actually quite complicated. So I don't think I'm going to go that route. I'll probably start with something that's um, a little easier um, to do with a small, you know, to do on my own, essentially. Um, and I think that may just start out as a really simple adventure game um, where it's really more just about, yeah, moving around and exploring stuff. Um, you know, it could potentially do a simulation game. And the, the nice thing there is some games are really um, programmer, programming focused. They're, you know, very like algorithmic. Um, so that lends itself well to, you know, a team that's, you know, basically just one programmer. Um, so, yeah, I'm not entirely sure yet. Um, I'm also not, um, I'm not set on using these kind of, uh, you know, pixel art style tiles, like these low, lo-fi pixel tiles. Um, I could very easily see using something that's, you know, much more like high resolution and doesn't have this like blocky uh, pixelated look. Um, but yeah, it's just going to depend a lot on the type of game. Um, part of that too is just um, like UI and art direction. So, it, um, you know, if it was to make a game where the grid is super important and you want to know where it is all the time, then it would make a lot of sense to like leave these dark lines on here uh, that really deline uh, yeah, delineate one tile from uh, the other. But if it's not such a big deal and um, you know it's a little more free movement, like say like an adventure game where maybe you're not even locked into moving like tile by tile, maybe it's more just like walking over the tiles, um, then those boundaries are a lot less important. So. Um, yeah, th this whole set that I'm using is just like a f like I don't know three to five dollar uh, set of pixel tiles that I got off of itch.io. Um, it's kind of the best one I could find. Um, so yeah, I'm not locked in on that. These could, these tiles could also be much bigger, or much smaller. Um, the way I've got this render set up, they could be like different aspect ratios too. Like right now, they're I think uh, basically twice as wide as they are high, and then they also have like a fixed height per tile. Um, but all that stuff's really adjustable. If I wanted to have like one tile be, you know, like two of these blocks deep, um, that would be an easy thing to do. So anyway, that's kind of where I am. Um, you know, I've been, as I mentioned, I've been learning uh, C++ um, and this SDL2 library as I go through this. And uh, um, yeah, that's been a little bit of an adventure, just trying to like learn how that all um, fits together. But um, yeah, it hasn't been too bad so far. I think it's been more straightforward than learning um, a big library uh, or big framework like Unity. Um, and I guess one of the reasons I wanted to try this too was I've made a lot of Unity videos over the year. And I'm always kind of frustrated when I go back to like, uh, I get a lot of questions about like, a, say like a problem that I had or a problem that somebody's had since I released the code. Um, and I just find that Unity makes all these updates and that just like breaks, uh, or so it's like constantly breaking uh, the way old code works or uh, they have like a new pattern for doing something or a new standard um, component for doing something. And it just seems to, like the videos I've made for it don't age very well. Um, and I think, I think that's just kind of like part of using a big framework. And uh, I can definitely see why there's, uh, you know, some prominent, uh, basically indie shops or small shops out there that really focus on just, you know, straight up C++ and like writing things themselves. So they're not uh, constantly fighting, um, you know, API, breaking API changes or like an inability to upgrade and those kinds of things. So, yeah, I don't know. It's kind of been my experience so far. Um, you know, if I get further along with this, um, you know, it's very much a hobby project, but you know, if it ever got to the point where I was more serious about it, um, I might be interested in um, collaborating with somebody on like artwork or sound or something like that. Um, I think ideally my hope is to be able to do some of the art and like music at least myself. 
Um, but, you know, these, um, I don't know, making a game's like a huge amount of work too. So realistically, <laughs> uh, I may just be kind of like forced to focus on the programming aspects, at least for like uh, getting like a, getting something out that, you know, works um, in a, a reasonable amount of time. Uh, you know, it's really inspirational to think of uh, indie developers making things like, uh, what is that game? Uh, Stardew Valley. Like, you know, it's basically just one guy and he wrote this whole game himself and he did the music and he did the art and he did all the writing and, uh, you know, ca uh, character illustrations and just everything. Uh, but it's also kind of depressing if you go look at the reality of that guy's story. It's like he didn't really know even how to program when he started. Um, and he he did the same thing that um, the pattern that he went through was very predictable. Like he realized after he'd been working on it for a while that it was just written in a way that wasn't going to grow. <laughs> and so he kind of like started over, I think um, at least a couple times during that project or just like completely rebuilt things. And uh, you know, ultimately was just stressed out his family, stressed out his finances, stressed himself out, um, you know, could barely, I would say he couldn't even really enjoy the uh, launch and success of the game because he was just so burned out and overwhelmed by the end of it. So I want to avoid that. Um, and um, so, yeah, I'll just have to kind of like pick and choose my battles um, and treat this as, you know, maybe the first uh, iteration of something that I'm going to do many iterations on. Um, and what, one thing I would love to do is just get this basic editor kind of like working and fun to use and maybe just treat it as like the initial an initial uh, rough release um because that would let me do a few things it would let me see if i can get this thing to work on um any kind of device so you know i'm building this on a, a pc with unix it'd be cool to see you know, if this would work on, um, you know, like a Mac laptop and, uh, you know, a tablet or a phone or whatever it is that, um, you know, people want to use. Um, supposedly this SDL2 library um, just makes all that work kind of by default, but there's always little um, quirks to doing that. Um, you know, things like supporting different aspect ratios or supporting, you know, when somebody like rotates their phone, uh, you know, like updating the display dynamically to fit the screen um, or letting people like manually set aspect ratios and resolutions and all that kind of stuff. Um, and just simple things like making sure mouse controls are good, making sure um, uh, gamepad controls are good, and making sure like touch controls are good. Um, yeah, there, there's just a lot of things that go into uh, like table stakes on a usable application these days. So I think setting my expectations extremely low for this version and just trying to make sure I have like the basics um, working correctly <laughs> might be a good starting point. Um, and then, you know, once I know that I have all that kind of stuff in place, I would feel better about, you know, investing a whole lot more time into making something cool. Uh, so anyway, that's kind of where I am. Uh, if you have, you know, questions or comments, throw them down below in the comments um you know you can reach out to me on twitter if you, if you want to go that route um yeah again you know this is all just like really early so um but i just i just wanted to share some progress i did a, a similar video uh, like a week or two ago and for some reason my audio when i'm recording on my new setup is just ridiculously low and i have to really crank up the uh gain in the in obs so that it's like even uh you know reasonably uh, before it gets up to a reasonable volume at all uh, i don't know why i'm gonna have to look into that but uh yeah that that's why that video is kind of weird so thanks for watching uh yeah leave a comment if you got a comment or hit me up on twitter and uh, i'll see you in the next one